bad, good. Hey everybody, welcome to the Rambling Grandma, where we ramble all day and run on forever. I'm your host, Robert Rios, and today we got a lot of good sports topics to talk about, so let's get to it. So, first up, I gotta say, this NBA free agency and trade talks have been one of the best things that happened to the sport since LeBron going to Miami. Like, this thing is huge. I don't remember the last time there were so many moves, you know, so much controversy, you know, a lot of talk around, you know, the Twitterverse and NBA Twitter. So, everybody is all in on this right now. And there were a lot of good moves that happened this past uh, free agency. Like, first off, we gotta start with the Kawhi Leonard move. He is now officially a Los Angeles Clipper. This is a little bit of a shocking move for me because uh, the Clippers have never always been good. But uh, I guess winning his first championship with Toronto was good for him and he decided to leave. It's the first championship the Toronto Raptors have ever won. And I just found it very odd that he decided to opt out and they leave the six to see what and to see what options he else he had in other places. And uh, this bidding war wasn't even was not never easy. Um, he had three main choices. He had the two LA teams. The Lakers were involved into this, so they were going head on, trying to see who could get ahead. Um, or he had he could just go back to Toronto. You know that'd be a very easy choice, but uh, he decided not to go back. I guess Drake couldn't convince him to leave. And now Kawhi will see himself playing with Lou Williams, Patrick Beverly, and Wilson Chandler. And oh yeah, um, Paul George also moved to the Clippers, so he also is now officially a teammate of his. That's pretty good job by the Clippers, who are probably the winners out of all this in the free agency talks. Uh... With Kawhi Leonard, we're going to see a way better team because on paper, they should be one of the front runners to win it all. Last season, the Clippers finished 8th finished, uh, excuse me, finished eighth in the West last season, which eh, they started out pretty good, but then, you know, they kind of just fell off the map and, you know, they like, kind of like, how you say limp their way across the finish line but it's all good it's all good so now next up on my list of free agency we had the Lakers who after the failed attempt to get Kawhi Leonard uh, the Lakers picked up Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins and a former teammate of Kawhi Leonard from Toronto Danny Green who I think is a very underrated player they they were also able to re, um, re-sign Rajon Rondo. Um, he's alright, but his defense isn't all there, so I don't know why they decided to bring him back. And this is another team on paper should be a contender, but for some strange reason, even with the best player in the world right now, LeBron James, they could not make the playoffs, which is so weird and so sad for the Lakers. You expect them to win championships, but they can't even make the playoffs. I think it's been six six seasons they haven't made the post postseason. Like, what is that? Come on, man. And also, I feel bad for Kyle Kuzma. Looking at the current roster, it doesn't look like there's any room for him on the starting lineup. He will most likely come off the bench, and hopefully he'll be a six-man, even though there's not many six-man players in the NBA right now. So he'll probably be on the bench for the first couple of games. Um, the next move that happened in the NBA this season was Russell Westbrook was somehow able to get traded to the Houston Rockets and to work again with his other former teammate, James Harden. But right now, you're like, oh, cool, now he's going to be with Chris Paul too. Nope. Uh, Chris Paul moved to OKC. So that was also a really big surprise. And apparently now he wants to get moved again. But OKC is having a little problem trying to figure out what, how to move him. 
So now we have to see how that story develops between the team. But the president has already said that he expects Chris Paul to play in the beginning of the season. But let's just hope Chris doesn't hold out like a lot of players have been doing recently. And next up, I got the Warriors and the Celtics. I put this one together because this one's pretty special right now for me. So first off, the Warriors had to give up Kevin Durant. His contract was up. He's hurt, and he wanted to see what other options he had. Uh, this may or may not work for him in the long run, because I know a lot of teams are very skeptical about signing injured players, but he's a good all-around player, and he should be fine wherever he goes, which I'll get to that right now. The Celtics lost their star player, their pure star player, Kyrie Irving. Which I don't know why, I don't know, off the top of my head, I don't know who else is going to carry that Boston team in the NBA now. So hopefully they recover. Um, So now, where did Kevin Durant and Kyrie ever end up going? Well, they went to a little place called Brooklyn, New York. They are now both officially Brooklyn Nets. So... Kyrie is a safe bet, but Durant is a liability. And with his ruptured right Achilles tendon, I don't think he's going to be playing anytime soon. So he's going to be out for a while, even though they signed him to a four-year max deal, which is crazy. Let's sign a guy that's hurt to a max deal. And why would they want to do that? Well, as I said, Durant is a very versatile player and you could expect him to do many things on the court he could shoot he could play defense he could do everything he get into the paint you don't have to worry about anything when he's on the floor if you don't need him to shoot he could pass the ball too he has good eye vision he knows where to put the ball he could put it in the net or he could put it in the next guy's hands so I'm pretty sure the Nets aren't tripping about anything right now Especially they got Kyrie Irving also and all this. Somehow making a little mini super team, I guess you could say. Even though I don't like using that term, super team. I think it's pretty stupid. So yeah, we got to see how this story also develops as well. And now at the end of my NBA free agency and trade list of topics are the New York Knicks. Poor, poor Knickerbockers. They are officially the losers of all of this. And right now you're probably saying, wait a minute, but these teams didn't do any moves. They did moves. No, no, no. The Knicks, they tried, which is a good thing. But they failed on so many numbers. It's not even funny. They couldn't even get a meeting with Durant. That's how bad this is. They said they wanted Durant. They couldn't meet up with him. And then for some reason, they had this weird idea. Someone from their public relations decided to put out, Oh, we didn't want to talk to him, actually. Because we didn't want to give him a max contract. Why? What were they thinking? This does not make any sense. This is why nobody cares about the Knicks. You know, if you care about the Knicks, it's just by the name. Who's important on that team? They couldn't get anybody. Uh, The front office, I just did not understand. How do you let your rivals down the road get two key players? One who is best in the league for the past like three years. Go to the Brooklyn Nets. They just they screwed this up. They screwed up. And now they're going to pay for it. Again. I, I believe they finished dead last last season. Which is rightly deserved. For the way they play. And the way they um, run that team. And uh, oh and then I think. Yeah. Porzingis. 
Poor Zing is not even on the team no more. Who do you have? Oh my gosh. This is just, ah, man. Shaking my head, you know? Sports, you gotta love it. Especially basketball. The, the Knicks, they have no fire. They have no drive. They have no give, you know? So yeah, that was my NBA free agency talk. That's what I wanted to put out there real quick. So, my next, next major topic, topic number two we got on the list, is of course everybody's favorite sport in the United States. Soccer. Yeah. But no, no, no. Not men's soccer. Screw them. They suck. We got the U.S. Women's FIFA World Cup winning championship run. Yes, I don't know why I said it like that, but close enough. FIFA World Cup 2019 Women's World Cup. We have the United States winning their fourth World Cup in history, and they are the second country to win back-to-back -back championships. Um, the U.S. went undefeated in seven games, reaching the final, defeating the Netherlands by a score of two to zero. And the way that game draw drew the well, the way that game was drawn up was Alex Morgan was stripped up in the penalty box, and Megan Rapinoe stepped up to take the penalty. Slap that shit in. The second goal was scored by Rose Lavelle, who zoomed past the, the defense and took a long raid shot. She deserved it. The women's team went undefeated by winning all seven of their games and breaking the scoring record for the tournament. And one game, actually the first game against Thailand, they scored 13 goals, which is crazy. And now they will spread their reign of terror in August against Ireland and the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Um, the... U.S. Women's World Cup was slightly interesting. Um, there is a few teams like France and uh, Germany who are oh, in Australia, Brazil, you know, uh, places where soccer is already more developed. Um, they put up a good fight, but you could tell in the women's game that they were struggling a lot out there, and you could even tell in the in the U.S. U.S. side too that we or a lot of the girls look like. They hadn't played in a while, and then what also made it worse was that they were using instant replay. They're using VAR. I feel like that probably shouldn't have been used in this World Cup, considering that a lot of these girls don't always get to play, and it was just very sad to watch sometimes. But for me, as a soccer purist, I loved it all, and I hope that the women winning the World Cup. Uh, elevates the sport in this country more and that we could just like push aside all this nonsense about that oh this team is cocky oh they're arrogant like they won the world cup back to back they could do whatever they want just like that one boxer dude that sang to his wife after he knocked out some food if a 6'5 six, 6'5 five, six, five tall ass food with big ass fist comes at me and he wants to sing Frank Sinatra he could do it well, what are we going to do to stop them, you know? So, you know, we got Megan Rapino leading this charge of, you know, women empowerment and the rest of the U.S. team. You know, I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's do this thing, you know? Let's elevate the sport to higher heights that I've never seen before. And hopefully even the men's team gets their head out of their asses and can finally win something. Can't even win a damn world. Fucking Gold Cup, gosh, against a second team Mexico team, gosh, man, stupid. I'm sorry for my rant, which is very upsetting. But good job, Team USA girls. You guys deserve it. For my third topic, I'm just going to be going over some of the MLB, MLB teams that are leading their division right now because we just crossed, we just had the All Star game. So we have officially past halfway through the season and uh there's a lot of good teams out there and some of them are per pretty surprising to see and also surprising to see a lot of good teams or teams that are usually good falling behind which is kind of odd and hopefully they could get a good run towards the playoffs towards the end so first off i'll start from the american league we got the east we got the new york yankees at the current Currently recording this, they are 60 and 33, four games ahead of the Tampa Bay Rays, and eight games ahead of the reigning defending champs, Boston Red Sox. 
And if the playoffs were to start today, the Sox are out. They're also behind in the wild card. So right now they need to step it up. And hopefully they could turn it all around. In the AL Central, in first place, we got the Minnesota Twins, who are 58-36, and 36, four games ahead of the Cleveland Indians. So, to me, this division is always the shittiest, honestly. There's always a bad team in here that represents them in the playoffs. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I think that Minnesota, what I've seen is that they're a really good team. And they were also one of those surprise teams that I didn't see coming out. I would have expected the Indians. The I, I would excuse me. I would have expected the Indians to be in first place right now. They're only four games back of them, so they can make a comeback anytime. So we gotta keep our eyes out on what happens in this division. Um, in the AL West, we have Houston with a record of 60 and 37 five games ahead of the Oakland A's who are really really good this season I did not expect them to play well at all the you I think they haven't made the playoffs in the past two or three seasons correct me if I am wrong um I usually don't see them as a contender but yeah I think besides the Minnesota Twins they're my top pick to uh to do well if they make it into the playoffs. I think they're for, they're in first place uh for the wild card right now. Which is pretty pretty good by my standards. And now I will move on to the National League East. And we got the Atlanta Braves who are 50 and 39. They they play re- pretty well in the playoffs. Um right now the Behind them are the Nationals, who are eight games back. And poor, poor Phillies. Poor, poor Bryce Hopper. Got a big contract. Moves from one team. Now, he's in another Now he's in another crappy team. <laughs> I don't know why players do this. I guess it really is for the money. Uh, right now, the Phillies are in third in the National League East behind Washington. His old team. I mean, they're only a game back. But they have a lot of ground to make up to catch up to Atlanta. And it just doesn't make any sense. The Phillies have not been good for the past couple of years. Those 09, 010, I think even 08 seasons are far from gone. And it's time for the Phillies to regroup. And I don't think they're going to catch Atlanta. They're, if I'm looking at right now, they're 8 or 9 games back of them. Oh no, excuse me. Seven and a half games back. Seven and a half. My bad. They could st- I guess, I don't know. It's up in the air, honestly. I don't, I don't think they're going to catch up. I think Washington has a better chance. But yeah, poor Phillies. Try to get Bryce Hopper, give him everything he wants. And they still can't go anywhere. Makes no sense at all either. So next up, I got the NL Central. We got the Chicago Cubs, who are 52 and 44, with Milwaukee right behind them by two games. Last time I checked, the Brewers were supposed to kill this division, but the Cubs have made a comeback. Yeah, uh, I was very surprised to see that the Cubs are in first place right now, but I guess it's just a back and forth contest right now between the Cubs and the Brewers. Uh, the Cubs were down and out last time I checked, but, uh, you know, a good resurgence, and they're ahead in the, the NL Central. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my head down with the Milwaukee Brewers right behind me because they have uh, Yelich who leads in home runs and everything else right ahead of Cody Bellinger of the Dodgers. So be ready to see a good race down the stretch of the season between the Cubs and the Brewers. And at the end of the MLB standings, we have the NL West. And all I have to say is, go Dodgers. Just kidding. No, yeah, the Dodgers are just, this division's wrapped up. 64 and 35. The The Arizona Diamondbacks are in second right now. They're 49 and 48. That's 14 games back. Giants are 15 games. Rockies are 16 and a half. 
and the uh, Padres are also 16 and a half games behind the Dodgers. The only way any of these teams could catch up is if the Dodgers have another losing streak of a month like how they had last season. But I highly doubt that's going to happen again. So yeah, that's my little checklist on who is winning in the MLB right now, Major League Baseball. And hopefully the Dodgers can finally win it all. Third time's a charm, right? Okay, so my next topic, my last and next topic I would like to talk about is something a little bit more personal to me. And while I was trying to figure out what a topic to go over in this, I wasn't really sure. So, you know, looking at different articles and such, I stumbled upon X Games. Do people remember the X Games? Extreme Sports? Extreme Games? People like that still? Well, I do and I don't, but uh, it's... Let me explain. <laughs> so, as a kid, I loved watching the X Games. And... That was the coolest thing ever. It was very competitive. Extreme sports athletes wanted to say, wanted to say, who was the best, or at least they were. They were very competitive, and they would do whatever to go beyond to win. Um, and like skating events, there was like Paul Rodriguez Jr., Chris Cole, a very young Nigel Houston, and of course Sean White. Um, man, I'm forgetting the other guy, Ryan Sheckler. How do you forget that guy? And in the BMX event, my favorite rider was Daniel Dares of. Venezuela. I just liked how he, he just moved around the park so fast. Um, in Moto X and Rally Cross, and in those events, we had Travis Pastrana. You know, he, he loved doing both of those events, and he would either be doing tricks on his bike or zip around in his rally car, and he would win both events in the same day, which is amazing to me. And at that time, and like back in the day, I, I used to wait all summer to watch them, but nowadays, when I tune in, there's just a bunch of guys I don't know, and there's no reason to watch. So my question is, is the X Games still meaningful at all? Um, Like, as I said, I'll look at it, I'm like, okay, who's this guy? Who's this little kid? I don't get it. And another problem, of course, you'd be like, well, do you watch? Do you follow all the events? Well, no, I, I don't. And not like how I used to, but... But back in the day, so you at least knew some of the competitors by name or even by face. I'm just like, who are these people? <laughs> I don't know you. And then also what I don't like is that every every year they bring in some new novelty event. Like, what the hell is was the, the Harlem motorcycle race really on a circle flat dirt track? That's what you guys want to bring in? That doesn't make any sense at all. What is that? Just give me a good competitive skate park show, you know? Like like I don't get it. I don't I don't think it's as meaningful or has the same bite as it used to. As me growing up following all all the skating events and BMX and whatnot. You know, I'm pretty sure, you know, and like extreme sports and skating there's a time for every generation in that sport and I think right now also uh my time is gone so everything else is all brand new to me and it's always progressing which is what I like but you know it's gotta be some continuity to all this and it doesn't make any sense to me and I just wish things were kind of like the same and another thing I would just like to add is that I don't like that they move cities every so often before you should just always be in Los Angeles and I could say I've been to a couple events I've seen Sean White skate and win uh he was in the vert event uh I've seen Travis Pastrana in rally car I've seen Travis Pastrana in um Moto X of speed and style that was amazing that was at the Staples Center back in the day here in Los Angeles but then, yeah, after LA, they moved out to Texas. They're out there just like, oh, let's see what's popular. Oh, we're going to be at a racetrack. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody show up. And, oh, yeah, we're going to have Metallica come and perform. Woo, yeah. I'm just like, what? This is the next games? What is this? Amateur hour? Come on, man. 
Give me the athletes. Give me the competitive. Give, give me the rawness, you know? We got street skaters, street BMX ra riders. I don't know. I'm just v very bewildered by the product that they like to present out to the people that show up. I mean, people still show up. A lot of people. But, I mean, what are they for? They're, what are they there for? Are they there to see fools fall and eat shit or are they there to see like a really good competitive showdown between extreme sports athletes and you know yeah it's all about a vibe you know like it's all about having fun and whatnot but at the same time like is it meaningful to win the x games so yeah that's just my two cents on what's going on what's the x games right now and currently uh just to put this note in, they're in Minneapolis now, so they have a new big ass stadium there and they can just hold all the events inside the stadium, outside the stadium. They don't got a trip about where to put Rally Cross or where to put where to put the motorcycle events now. So I guess they're gonna be in Minneapolis for a while. No X Games for me. Sad. But it's all good. Maybe I'll watch it, who knows? It's in August. I'll see what's up. Okay, so that was a good episode I think to myself okay so that was today's episode of the rambling runoff once again I am your host Robert Rios and this is the rambling runoff see you next time